I could at least start recording for that. How's it going, everybody? Uh, it's been a little while uh, for those who've kind of kept track. Um, oh, look at that. 61 and 79. Didn't we have like one of the worst records in AAA? Minor league playoffs. Would you like to stop simulating? No, because I'm not part of it. But uh, yeah, went on vacation. Took a cruise for about a week. It was interesting. Uh, play vision, play discipline. Oh, I don't know what I want to do. By the way, why aren't you giving me anything that allows me to up my cap on hitting? That would be the one I'd want to do. I feel like, honestly, I might actually... Well, you know what? Maybe I'll do reaction drills. I thought about power. But that's okay. But I thank you guys for coming out <clears throat> for that. I wanted to do Fire Pro today because I realized that I'm kind of I kind of neglected it before I left in favor of college hoops, and I'm neglecting it today because I feel like I I need to be like more on to do that. When one of your top guys is a scandal in TW, oh yeah. I mean, I guess I haven't had to deal with a scandal, but more or less drug issues. The Indians have defeated the Cubs in the 2018 World Series. Hooray! Uh, advance to the offseason. Postseason stats will be cleared. Sure, retired players. Bunch of retired players out. I don't care. <laughs> Who's going in? Beltre, Ichiro, and Pujols. It's weird that Ichiro didn't have a team when he... Wasn't he with the... Uh, must have been a couple years ago when he played for the Marlins. I don't even remember. Hmm. I don't know. Isn't he like... I think he's like 42 now. So, it doesn't really uh, surprise me in the least. Contract offers. No contract. What? Feels odd. Let's, let's go here, then. <clears throat> you think I'd have something. Okay. How about, how about we go through here, then? Your date significance. Okay, so this is where... No, still don't have anything. What the hell? Alright, cool. I'm just gonna go... I'm just gonna go to the end here. And you figure out <laughs> if you're gonna give me something. There you go. One year contract for $84,000 is a triple A starter for the Tigers. Yeah, sure. wonder what happened if I'd say no. <laughs> that fucking lightning here so if you drop out your internet drop damn I guess I don't really I'm not really in a position to be uh, trying to make deals with people so I might as well just sign it you got realistic Ichiro must be in the front office for the Mariners just like in real life oh maybe uh, where's the end of them? There we go. Here, I'm just gonna do it like this, and then they can let me know. All right, well, I'm guessing I'm just going straight to spring training then. Yeah, I wanted to do Fire Pro, but in my head, I don't know if there's any. See, it doesn't look like I'm in spring training at all for this. Yeah, I don't have. I'm not. I'm not in any of this. So, but yeah, I, I felt like I needed to be on to be able to like kind of hang out and do that. Besides, I'm sure people would probably not mind hearing my stories about my cruise. And the show happens to be that perfect game for that because it's not really too intense that I can't really talk about it and then um, play at the same time advance the regular season yes 
and start another season, this time fully in AAA. Play my next appearance. You'd think I'd have more, like, training things I could do. You'd think they'd have that, but I guess not. Oh, well. Here we go. I am still itchy, like, all over my shoulder blades and my shoulders. I will say, <clears throat> one thing I did realize is that me and the sun do not get along. This is, uh, it, it's one of those things that uh, I always think to myself, you know, maybe I don't spend enough time out in the sun getting that vitamin D, you know, getting some, getting some UV rays, it'd be all great. Well, got a little overdosed on that vitamin D, so, uh. Yeah, I'm I'm fleeing back into the darkness like a vampire. Going, no, nope, I'm okay with not having. To, oh wow, that was so early. Not having direct sunlight for the next I don't know year. <laughs> I'm perfectly okay with that. Oh damn it! I meant to. I actually like thought I tapped it to try to check swing, but I mean. To be fair, that I'm, I'm not very skilled at uh, my plate discipline right now, so that was a dumb idea. My bat actually went farther than the ball. I deserve that out. <laughs> my flaking up? Oh fuck yes, I'm flaking up. I actually like there were several times at work throughout the day that I literally like grabbed my shirt, like kind of. Uh, at the front part of my shoulders to just like shake out whatever's in there and then there's just like dead skin flakes just falling out onto the armrest of my uh, chair it was kind of disgusting so yeah flaking up is a is a very nice way to put it it was it, it's like someone with horrible dandruff like scratching through their head but it was just you know a Twitch streamer in the sun disagree. Yeah, the thing is, is that I got this really bad sunburn, and then everyone had always asked me. They're just like, do you use sunscreen? It's like, yeah, I know I got to use sunscreen. I did use sunscreen. Maybe what I used wasn't waterproof enough, but I tried, and I still failed. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm I'm very happy with this uh, whole darkness thing. Yeah, cause of death, skin cancer. You know what? It that might very. Who knows? I like how it's carrying over the hitting streak from last season, though. Because a 13 game hitting streak on the first game of the season means they're carrying that over. So that's pretty good. I I mean I guess why wouldn't they? But I don't know. But yeah, I, I don't think the sunburn was going to be as bad originally, but what basically happened was, okay, so the cruise is like seven days. It was like, what was it? Two at sea days, three port days, and then two more at sea days. So we get through, we get through our first port day, Cozumel, Mexico. That was fun. Uh, it was kind of nice because I didn't spend any money on excursions. You know, you can do the kind of thing with cruises where it's just like, oh, come to this place and swim with stingrays. Like, I saw that. That was like a big thing in Cosmo. I was like, you can swim with the stingrays. I mean, I'm like, the thing that killed the crocodile hunter, the guy who regularly fucked with crocodiles, yeah, I'm good. And, and also, I didn't want to pay that money. So it was just it was just me and a buddy. Like walking from like the ship into downtown Cosmo, and it was fun. I tweeted about the guy who owned a uh, a stall because it was like two two and a half, almost three miles from there. So it was kind of it was kind of funny that, uh, yeah, we had the we had a guy who had a stall like a good mile and a half in. He's just like, hey, man. 
hey man, do you mind if I rip you guys off? I'm like, you know what? You're a straight shooter. I see that. Uh, I, I see that you got a you got a interesting and unique line to get people uh, to get people to uh, understand you. So let me see what you got. He was like selling sunglasses and stuff that I thought about getting because I didn't have sunglasses, but I didn't need sunglasses badly enough. And they were like five bucks, but they were like really not great. They were like, eh, no. Then he had like a ladle holder, which, you know, at, in and of itself looks really nice. And then offered me tequila shots, which, you know, when you think in hindsight, probably wasn't the best idea to just be like, okay, sure. <laughs> but I took a t couple of tequila shots with him, which everyone kind of looked at me somewhat horrified. After I would tell them that that I went to Mexico and drank Mexican tequila with some random guy uh, on vacation, you know, when you say it out loud, it sounds a lot worse than it was. <laughs> but yeah, I bought the shot glass off of him. It was fun there. But they didn't want to try ripping you off because they knew you're a tourist. Oh fuck yes. Oh yeah. Now, all three places. I mean, they have that shit set up. They have that shit absolutely set up. Like, it's a thing where you get off the boat and you go to, like, this pier area, and it is people hustling. Like, it is, you are bombarded with, uh, foul. You are bombarded with hustling pretty much as soon as you get onto the pier. That's the thing, is it's guys going, hey, come in here, come try this. Uh, I wonder if I got stop you guys for a second, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, it's, it's constant hustling. But uh, yeah, I mean they can they can usually tell who's a, who's a, who's a local and who's uh, not. So yeah, but it is it is consistently like, hey man, come in here, come in here. We need to show you something. I'm like, no, th like you have to. It's the thing where you really have to learn the art of just kind of like continuously walking, say no, thank you, and then just just keep walking. Don't even worry about that. Just go so that was uh that was a thing is it was uh yeah there's a lot a lot a lot of tourist traps on there and that's the thing is you gotta you gotta just learn to say oh that's i'm not gonna make it you gotta learn to say no thank you and just keep walking wow i actually made it <clears throat> But, uh, yeah, uh, there's also a lot of silver places there because as I found out that silver in those like Caribbean islands, silver is pretty much where they get most of that stuff. So it's abundant there and you don't have to go through uh, like middlemen, but they'll still try to get as much money as they can out of you. So, which is why, which is what's great about a lot of these stores, is even when they look like super de duper official. I mean, the prices can still be bartered. You know, you can still, you can still, you know, barter something down. Which is what we did at a lot of those places. Because when we were walking there, you know, they would offer like bottles of water, like, hey, ice cold bottles of water, four dollars. And then, like, once we got like a mile in away from like all the taxis and stuff because that's a huge thing too is like just as you're kind of getting onto the street that was a massive thing that they had there was was uh hey we can get you a taxi downtown you know just just come follow me and we're like no we'll just walk so yeah that it's uh it, it was it was fun with that but yeah once we walked like a mile or so in inland past the pier and past all the taxis and all that um yeah bottle water was extremely cheap and plentiful at that point bottles that you were spending four dollars on you can now get like you know i think they were selling like 20 ounce bottles of water legit for like four dollars at the pier right as you get off the ship you walk like a mile down and that's when you can get like the the 32 ounce one liter bottles for like a buck in fact, we found a, uh, like, um, uh, I can't remember what it was called, but uh, I have a uh, Mexican friend who 
he moved here a few years ago and told me that that's kind of like their their main supermarket chain. And we we found one there downtown, sort of away from other stuff. And they had like they had a bunch of water there too. Like they had like uh, they were selling legit like five liter bottles of water for like a dollar fifty. But uh, yeah, I ended up. Uh, I guess I guess I could make it somewhat wrestling related because, uh, considering it is Mexico, there was a litany of luchador masks that people were selling on top of other useless garbage that uh, I didn't really need. And I actually did manage to buy a uh, Blue Demon Junior mask for ten dollars. And uh, it's a very good quality. Uh, it's a little bit thicker than the La Parca mask that I own, but uh, it's very sturdy and it has the nice little tie-off in the back. And I think I got a, a you know pretty good deal on it. It's kind of simple, you know, but uh, I, I enjoy that. And, uh, yeah, there was a guy at uh, one of the shops. He was selling what he claims was professionally like professional quality uh luchador mask because he was like looking he saw me looking at the masks and he was like trying to explain who the guys were and like their masks and stuff and i just went along with it because in my mind i was just sitting here going you don't need to tell me who the fuck ray mysterio is if i'm sitting here staring at a ray mysterio mask i probably kind of know who ray mysterio is but he's like, yeah, he's a WWE wrestler, and as you can see, this is a professionally made mask. It's got the little strap on the bottom, and blazy, blazy, blazy. And he's like, okay, yeah. And then he's like, okay, this one, you see, this is uh, Caristico. He was in WWE as well, and uh, this is, uh, you know, professional made. You know, not a lot of them have the little tie-offs in the back. You know, it's just a slip over or a Velcro or something. And in my mind, I was like, well, I just bought a Blue Demon Junior mask with a tie off in the back. So whatever. And he's like, yeah, but this is this is like an official licensed AAA mask. And and uh, I was like, OK, how much like how much are you asking for it? And he's like, well, uh, either these masks is like one hundred and twenty. But uh, if you pay for cash, it'd be a hundred and like. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back and I'll see if I uh, if I feel like it. <laughs> I was like, eh. Oh, like we are going to say, yeah, we bumped into Pentagon Jr. When I cruise Central America, they stop in Cozumel. They got his handmade Rey Mysterio Jr. mask. Yours is green and black. Your brother's is white. Yours had tie-offs that made yours feel legit. Yeah. Yeah, there were some fun ones there, too. Like, I wanted to get some of the ones that aren't super like blue demon jr is probably a little bit more available than some other ones but i thought there was a there was one that i almost bought but it was super early in the trip and i don't want to spend money on it right away but it was a uh, a psycho clown mask because i'm like okay there's not a lot of places you can just buy a psycho clown mask <laughs> I forgot to grab it on my way back, mostly because it was already like hot and we were out in the heat and everything. But yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. But uh, yeah, I feel like I feel like for ten dollars, I did really good on the Blue Demon Junior mask, which is good because I feel like there are other times I I didn't quite get a deal. So I feel I feel good at least in Cozumel. Uh, yeah, when I went to Jamaica, not so much. Uh, that was mostly me and uh, desperation that uh, led to me probably getting ripped off. But I'll be okay. I'm pretty sure he didn't hit the uh, he didn't hit the bag. I don't think they hit the bag on either one of those. No, what the hell? Okay, I mean, sure, why not? Bushy mask, La Sombra. La Sombra would have been cool. Like, I could have recognized the La Sombra mask if I saw it. Just go. Just go. Just go. Just go. I thought he was going to tag me, then he went over to second. Okay. The one Cena mask. It was really weird because uh, they sell very... Like, okay, you have to, you have to dig... In order to find, like, the cool luchador masks, though, 
is they sell like the luchador mask, which is really cool. But it was also mixed in with these very Americanized luchador masks. Like, okay, obviously they're trying to sell this to tourists, and they're trying to sell it to tourists who maybe don't watch wrestling. So while I would be interested in a La Sombra or a Psycho Clown or a La Parka or a Blue Demon Jr. mask, there's, you know, Billy Bob and Billy Bob and his fat wife from goddamn middle of nowhere, Missouri, probably don't give two shits about who the fuck Blue Demon Jr. is. So they have these very Americanized luchador masks which are basically Rey Mysterio masks, but with uh, like sports teams on it. It was it was very interesting because yeah, uh, mixed amongst like the some of the masks that I was interested in was like you know like a Cleveland Indians Mysterio style mask or a, like a New England Patriots style Mysterio style mask. It was really odd. <laughs> I was like, okay, sure, this is this will be a thing. But yeah, I you know, I don't I don't know how much they sell those for. No, nor do I care. Did the, <laughs> did the man from Iowa have the nuts to call somewhere else, middle of nowhere, bumblefuck? Yes, I did, because I live in Des Moines and I've been to the middle of nowhere in Missouri. I, I have a buddy of mine who lives in, like, this 300-person town in the middle of nowhere in Missouri where the nearest, like, anything is a Walmart half an hour away. So I've seen, I've seen the people who live out in the middle of, like, I, I've, I've seen the people who live out in the middle of nowhere there. <laughs> That's why I feel confident. <laughs> Uh, batting coach is quite. I I I've been doing pretty good. I, okay, you know what? Just as soon as you say that, God damn it! I was doing a uh, like I I couldn't have jinxed myself more when I was just about to finish the sentence of I've been doing really good with my swinging, and then I do that garbage. Cosmopolitan as fuck. <laughs> Des Moines. <laughs> Yeah, uh, let me see here. I have an XL name of Hawkeye Pro instead of Destiny Pro in your stream title. <laughs> Dynasty Pro, some type of that. You're in the middle of nowhere in New Jersey, so it's fine. I mean, yeah, I've known I've I've known some people from the middle of nowhere in certain states, and it's it's really odd. Yeah, we had a when we visited our buddy in the middle of nowhere in Missouri, we rented a cabin on a lake. And it's not really what you'd expect from a cabin on the lake. We all came to the consensus after we take our showers every morning that we still didn't qu feel quite clean. There just wasn't some. There was just something about the uh, about the water that was pumping through our cabin that just made us feel unclean. Still, <laughs> am I still in AAA? I have no idea. But. Uh, yeah, either either way, Mexico was fine. Uh, it was it was a lot of us trying to find Wi-Fi too. Me and my buddy were both on a quest to find Wi-Fi. We found like this little stand. It was like a, a imagine a, a miniature Starbucks, but it was like its own freestanding building, and it had the amenities of a Starbucks, which is of course free Wi-Fi and just little. You know, like, you know, like little little snacks and stuff, and it was nice. And it's and it was one of those places not a lot of people went to, because it's not really right there amongst a bunch of shit. So that was that was nice. Oh my god, it wasn't even terrible, but Wi-Fi Quest. Hey, it was more. It was more my buddy because he plays like a, a an online Android game, and wanted desperately to have some Wi-Fi to get his uh, login bonus for the day. Man needed to get his daily login bonus. So, <laughs> play discipline as you remember it. <laughs> 
But, uh, yeah. Let me see here. Cayman Islands. Wasn't really much about the Cayman Islands. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else about Cosmo to remember other than drinking tequila with one of the local guys. I swear to God, I'm not swinging at garbage here. I just don't know why I can't hit a goddamn thing today. Did I go hitless? Did I did I end my... Yeah, I went 0 for 4. I ended my hitting streak today. Good for me. I really should just be taking... You know, I, I guess I don't have to swing at everything that's not a strike. So, really, I should probably just take some called strikes and uh, try to make something of that instead. That would be that would be uh, probably preferred. I like how I have that, that small boost that's been given to me, too. Like, listen, you've been doing kind of shit. So, let's, let's go ahead and change that up. Somewhere it's like oh so for four and three of those you were grounding out on the first pitch. I know. I feel like not all of that. Wait, isn't Edwin Encarnacion? Isn't he like a? Wasn't he an MLB guy for a while? Maybe he's down here for something. I don't know. Pretty sure Encarnacion's a MLB guy. Maybe he's coming off of an injury. See, plate vision. That was a, that was a good one. But yeah, it was it was hard to find certain. Ah, so it was hard to find certain areas for Wi-Fi. That's why I thought we got really lucky with finding the Starbucks. Cause it's like, okay, perfect. There you go. Oh, drop. Okay, cool. That's all I want is just a little, just a little bopper to get on the base. <clears throat> Cayman Islands, I don't remember being much of anything. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that was that was where we basically just went out swimming. We went snorkeling. Hey, those were all good pitches. I'm, I, you know, you could, uh, oh, I already. Yeah, those were all good pitches. <laughs> <laughs> None of those were like real garbage, but uh, yeah, we went snorkeling with uh, some other people. It was all right. I think the taxi stuff was a little uh, is a little expensive, and uh, they they're very big on when they have tourists trying to get to the beach. They try to get the most money out of people by just cramming them in. Like, it's amazing where they find these, like, big taxi, t like, taxi van things. I don't know what the hell they are. They're basically, like, small buses where you have, like, three seats and a small aisle. But once you fill those seats, there's another seat that's been folded up from the armrest that can now fold down to fill the aisle to fit another four or five more people where the aisles used to be. <laughs> it's... It's kind of crazy. <clears throat> Especially good with the piss and he'll hit me in the head. <laughs> but, um, yeah, got a little sunburnt. Saw some, saw some neat fish. The snorkeling was, the snorkeling was kind of fun. Uh, my buddy and his family bought like these, uh, these like full face mask snorkels. That have like the uh, the the breathing apparatus basically attached to the mask and sticking up, so that it's all just one big thing, and then you just strap it to the back of your head. It's actually really cool. The only uh, I think he got it on Amazon. It was really cool. The only downside is is that it basically like it it doesn't take much to like fog the uh, the um, fog the whole stuff up. So, oh, I probably could have just tagged him. Oh, well. But, um, yeah, it really fogs up the, uh, the, the sight area, so you can't really see too much. But, uh, yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't a ton of fish, but there was a couple of them that looked, uh, really nice. And then I got sunburnt there. I got sunburnt kind of bad there on my neck and shoulders, 
but it wasn't too bad. I wasn't really like what happened was I went out there not really expecting to actually go swim. So I didn't really bother with putting a bunch of sunscreen on. So that was probably one of the big things is that I didn't really bother doing the sunscreen thing. Should I try to leg out three? Yeah, let's be stupid here. Ah, oh, that was really dumb. That was really dumb. To me, that was just way too big of a risk. If you're leading off an inning and you've already got two pitches easily, pull up and pack yourself. Yeah, you don't go you don't go that far. You don't get to go that far in. Yeah, that was That was one of the dumber ideas that I had was trying to leg out to a triple. I should have just been happy with my double. <laughs> Hey, look at that. So I didn't put much sunscreen on, and I got kind of sunburnt there. So I was like, all right, when we go to Jamaica, uh, I, I ain't going to do the water thing. I'm going to do, do shade and hang out with uh, my buddy who couldn't. F oh, why did I do that? Oh, boy. Can't wait for the delay to catch up to that one. Yeah, the, I don't get the the guy's facial hair is on another level here. There you go. Okay. <laughs> this guy's facial hair is really something. But uh, yeah, I basically what happened is I planned. I I absolutely planned on not swimming that third day when we hit Jamaica, and then. I did. Did I get low latency mode on my channel? I have no idea because I don't remember doing anything about that. Uh, yeah, I didn't know there is a low latency mode on my channel. Now in the box, big dirt bag. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim. I'll have to check that out. But uh, yeah, uh, one thing I uh, one thing I had forgotten to mention was that uh, on this on this uh, on this trip, I knew it was going to be me and a friend of mine. It, he he was basically a friend of a friend. I really feel like that was a good one. <clears throat> And he's a friend of a friend. And, uh, you know, I like him, hang out with him. And I met him through one of my work friends, who was the guy who kind of convinced me to go on it this year. Because him and his wife go every year. They use, like, their, um, they use their uh, tax return on it. So they do that. And I assumed it was just going to be us four. And then I was reminded about a month ago that he had planned to bring his kids with. So I'm like, okay, yeah, there's, okay, yeah, you're right. You told me you were going to bring your kids. Gotcha. Not a problem. And then I find out like the day before that not only was it going to be my buddy and his wife, his two kids, and the other friend of ours that I was rooming with, and me, um... It was also uh, my buddy's parents, the guy I'm rooming with's parents, and oh god damn it! I I tap the button to check to check swing. I swear I checked my swing. He's just not disciplined enough right now, because the real life person holding the controller <laughs> is not skilled enough yet. <laughs> So it was okay. So it was two sets of parents as well, and uh, an aunt and uncle, and then another couple, who the aunt and uncle had invited, I guess, months ago, and then they told them openly, they're like, "Oh yeah, we can't get the time off. We can't get the money together. Blah blah blah. We're not able to go." So they're like, "Oh okay, that sucks, but all right, you know, I understand." Hey, sack fly, an unintentional sack fly. <laughs> and then what happened was the day that we boarded they were just like surprise we're here we're getting on the boat so I was like okay cool and also uh, my buddy's cousin and her mother 
Now the weird, the 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 interesting thing about her cousin is his cousin is that it is a a female. Uh, she is twenty five and single, and quite cute. <laughs> And into video games and other stuff I wouldn't have expected from her. So I was like, oh, I, I, and I was getting along great with her uh, throughout the, uh, throughout the, um, the cruise. And also still, still kind of uh, getting along with her even outside of that because as I found out through, through talking to her, that she works down the street from where I live, and she actually lives somewhat down the street from where my place is. So, like, she lives, like, five minutes down the road, and then she works another, like, a different direction five minutes down the road. And I'm like, oh, shit, you're just, like, right there. <laughs> In before lesbian plot twist. I don't know. She was uh, I, she was very flirtatious. Maybe maybe I looked too far into it. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, she was uh, she was very flirtatious and calling it and like and like telling people that she got engaged to me and a buddy like he that, like both of us like she's like oh yeah I got engaged to two different people on this trip and we're just like sure why not K. Okay. She really liked drinking. She really enjoys drinking. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically how I ended up getting blisters on my shoulders from sunburn is because I decided I wasn't going to go swimming in Jamaica. To bring this all back around, uh, I decided I wasn't going to go swimming in Jamaica. And then she, oh. You know, it's one of these times like this that I just go, God damn it, That's, that doesn't help my case out when I talk about the fact that I've learned some plate discipline. That really doesn't help out. There you go. Okay, damn it. Okay, that was, that was at least a solid one. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't, plan on, uh, I didn't plan on swimming in Jamaica, and then she was like, oh yeah, I'm getting it. I got to get my bathing suit because I want to go swimming out there. So I was just like, me too. <laughs> She's like, are you going to go swimming? I'm like, sure. <laughs> Why not? So I did, and then just caked on the sunscreen, and it just still wasn't enough. Maybe the sunscreen I had wasn't as waterproof as I thought it was. That was, uh, yeah. <laughs> I just saw him back when he said he was going to say something about the sack fly opportunity, but just assume he'd swing at everything anyway and have the same effect. <laughs> now I'll back it up. But uh, yeah, before remembering drinking, I thought that sounded like a high school. That sounded like high school girl shit. Was I rocking the boat? Not quite. But yeah, I don't know. It was. It's one of those things that I, you know, maybe in the future, I'll find out if it was just her, like, you know, drunkenly flirting a lot. I don't know. We'll see. Who knows. But uh, yeah, it was it was uh, it was definitely fun. Uh, the the guy I roomed with has been going on cruises since he was a teenager with his parents, and his parents go on a ton of cruises as well. And it's a Royal Caribbean cruise. And as I found out when I got there. Is that with Royal Caribbean, if you are a uh, loyal enough customer where you have gone on, you know, let's say like at least like 10 to 12 uh, cruises with them. If you've gone on at least like a dozen cruises with them, it's probably 10. <laughs> you are what they call a diamond member. And oh boy, that's not going to make it, is it? Ugh. And... The thing about diamond members is they get like special little perks. They can get some discounts in the in the, the shops that they have, which is always insanely interesting to me, because 
When I think about spending a ton of money on a cruise, that's the first thing I think about doing is going down to like the fifth floor and just checking out all the shops in case I wanted to, to do some clothes shopping while on the boat. I don't know why people do that, but okay. I went shopping there, but I went shopping there for like aloe vera. <laughs> I was like, all right, I need it, so I'll get it then. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, diamond members. So the thing with Royal Caribbean is, did they just fucking dab? Yes, they did. Unfortunately, they did. So the thing about diamond members is uh is uh they they get some perks they they, they get some uh, you know we started off with like some extra bottles of water and like a plate of cookies and treats and stuff in our room so that was really cool and one of the big things as well is <laughs> really upset over the dabbing <coughs> ooh Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, um, is there any anything that could increase my cap, or am I just going to do some... You know what? I might actually just do that. I'll add a little bit of power to my swing. There we go. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, they have, a, they have a thing for diamond members pretty much all the way up at the top of the ship. They have a nice little like nightclub slash lounge that not a lot of people go to. It's kind of fun because you can go you can go to this lounge and just hang out and there's a nice view of the whole boat. It was fun because not a lot, whole lot of people actually went to this lounge and uh, you could just get a seat right next to the window and watch uh, bad parenting happen. That was really bad. I'm gonna fail this so hard. You can watch bad parenting happen as parents just want to relax on a boat while uh, kids uh, end up like borderline hurting themselves on uh, on uh, on uh, water park equipment. That was dumb. <laughs> the more I think hashtag ad. Well, it's the thing is I'll never get it. But also, okay. So, yeah, they have a special room called the Diamond Lounge. And in the Diamond Lounge, it's like a small little room. It holds maybe 20 to 25 people. That was... Eh. 20 to 25 people. And in there, they have like a, a nice little espresso machine. They have a... Uh, by the way, I have no idea how many... What score I need to get, but I know I'm not going to hit it. So at the Diamond Lounge, they have like a uh, you know a nice little cappuccino machine. They have uh, uh, like little appetizers they put out, like crab cakes and like little tiny egg roll stuff and all that. And the big thing that a lot of people take advantage of is the fact that they have a waiter that will come around to each table and give you whatever drinks you want, whatever drinks you want, and it is all free. So it is, it, it's only like three hours a day, but there's a lot of people, I don't know why I swung at that. And it is, it is uh, three hours a day and there's a lot of people who go there for like the three hours and just load up on, uh, on uh, booze and all sorts of stuff. I'm just going to quit out of this because this is making me sad and this is making me look terrible as terrible as I actually am. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah I started off the first couple days just getting like sodas and stuff and and then uh, the, the the particular female who was also there with us on the trip uh, wanted someone to drink with her because she didn't want to be the only person drinking so I was like alright uh, I guess I could do Jack and Coke so yeah that became a thing Pretty much every day was we would go there for like at least two hours <laughs> and fill up. She would get like she would get like dirty martinis and chardonnays, and I would get Jack and Coke, and we just hang out. And this is all before dinner. 
This is all before like an eight o'clock dinner. It was ridiculous. Yeah, she wanted you as camouflage for her drinking problem. Yes. Did did I smash? I did not, but I think that was mostly due to the fact that I was sharing the room. You know, I was sharing a room with one person, and she was sharing a room with her mother, who I found out her mother's very protective of her. Doesn't want her to like. She was. Uh, she. This is one of the complaints that she had when she was drunk was that her mother didn't even like her going places by herself on the boat. Like, she's very protective of uh, uh, of her, you know, making sure she doesn't, like, hurt herself. And she's she's one of those people who think, like, the, the worst possible things can happen on a, on a cruise ship because it's possible, you know. So, yeah. But her mother was nice, just a little overprotective, even for a 25-year-old woman. But, yeah, sloshed head 69. <laughs> Uh, rooming with her mom built in through. Oh my god! <laughs> but uh, yeah, she was she was very 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 flirtatious. Like yeah, I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, it's at least it at least gives me an opportunity. Like we exchanged like info and stuff to potentially hang out and do stuff outside of the cruise ship, especially considering she lives like, like I said, like five minutes down the road. So that helps. If even that. In fact, she in fact she lives at an apartment building. the The apartment buildings that I live at right now was my was my choice. Because between me and my roommates, we had choices for apartment buildings we wanted to live in. So they had an apartment building choice, and I checked it out, and I was like very him ha about it. I'm like, eh, you know, it's all right, but I feel like it could be better. And they're like, okay, uh, do you have a do you have a place? And you know, the place that I picked that we should try to look at is the place we're living at now. The place that they originally were at that I wasn't too fond of is where she's living. So, yeah, I was like, okay, that's cool. Not the greatest, but yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, it was uh, it it was fun. And oh yeah, the thing about the Diamond Lounge, <laughs> the um, on top of the uh, uh, the cappuccino machine, because they have the cappuccino machine, they have uh, like coffee to go cups. Uh, but they really don't care if you. They really don't care about what you put in the to-go cups. And they really don't care at dinner that you bring to-go cups with you. So let's say you have a bunch to drink before dinner and you want one for the go. You you are oh. you you've had you've had let's just say someone has had a couple of Jack and Cokes in them and they want to take one for the road. That is perfectly a okay. They will show up as they're close, you know, as it's closing, going, okay, here you go. Like, great, I'm going to grab a to-go cup and just pour it in the to-go cup and take it to dinner with me. <laughs> I feel like they're basically encouraging alcoholism at that point. And no one bats an eye at this. Right to the shortstop. Perfect. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. So there was a lot of drinking. But I don't. I still don't even drink that much. Um, but the dude's parents and that, that particular girl, they do. And, yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. <laughs> by, the, by the end of, like, the seventh day on the last day where everyone has completely stopped giving a fuck... You know, we're just playing card games loudly and just being interruptive. Or I'm trying to be at least somewhat quiet. The others are just like, ah. Yeah, it was, it was something. The more you drink, the less you notice the effects of coronavirus. <laughs> they sell cans of Jack and Coke in their 7-Eleven adjacent. Okay. They actually they do that here in some of the grocery stores. Is they have uh, Jack Daniels like branded 
what they call blackjack cola in glass bottles that you can buy as like a six pack. It's nice. Oh, I thought I had it. Come on, what are you doing? Maybe I maybe I needed to jump, but it made it. They made it look like it was gonna fall right there. See, they made it look like it was gonna fall, so I tried diving for it, but then apparently it actually had more to it, more more uh, more air to it than I thought. <laughs> the clever top four loco. But yeah, Jamaica, I kind of got ripped off. Bought a couple of board shorts. They're really trying to sell me on some shit, man. Oh, my God. Like, I, I got away with not having to spend too much uh, compared to what they wanted me to spend. Like, I came in there. I'm like, yeah, I'm just looking for a pair of board shorts that I can kind of wear around the water. They're like, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, here's a pair of board shorts here. But really, really, you need two. You need two board shorts. And here's two different pair of board shorts. I'm like, okay, you know what? If I These these look like nice designs and all that. I can get two. They're like, okay. Yeah, you should get a t-shirt too here while you're at it. We got nice t-shirts and you can feel how soft it is. I'm like, yeah, it's a very soft t-shirt. I can do that. And then that's where I stop. Because I'm like, yeah, I'll do... I'll do two, you know, a T-shirt and a couple pairs of board shorts, and like, oh, well, you should get a hat, and I'm like, I don't need a hat, I'm wearing a hat, and they're like, well, this is a much better hat than what you got. I'm like, thanks for insulting my hat. Why don't you ring me up? And they're like, oh, no, you can get some spices. You know, we're really well, you know, we're really well known for our spices. There's a whole spice rack over here. I'm like, that's great. Why don't you ring me up? <laughs> Insulting my hat so you can sell more hats and try to sell more t-shirts. I don't need a ton of t-shirts. I'll take one t-shirt. I'll take two pairs of board shorts and get the fuck out of here. They're like, oh, you need sunglasses. You're not wearing sunglasses. I'm like, I haven't had sunglasses in this entire trip. I think I'll be okay. Bring me the fuck up. Yeah, pretty much right up to the point that I walked out. They're just trying to upsell me on more shit. So yeah, needless to say, I'm I'm uh, I I told them I was abundantly clear with them. I'm like I just want to make it abundantly clear that uh, I will fully enjoy this cruise and probably not go on another one, and just be fine with the one that I was on, and uh, not do this again. Oh shit! What? Why didn't he move? I moved the stick. He didn't move. He just stood there like, man. Like, <laughs> fucker. What is that? The fuck was that? He just didn't move. I even moved the stick. And he just like, no, nah, I'm just going to stand here. Don't you dare tell me that's fair. Yeah, but we but we did a really good job of uh, trying to get some decent deals, though. Oh, that's another thing. Oh, I forgot about all the times we got to hustle the hustlers. All right, so <laughs> that was one thing I wanted to talk about in Cosmo. Okay, I checked my swing. He went anyway. I would like to let you know that I tapped the button to check my swing. Most of the time he'd check it. I, I He did it. He swung anyway. Would like that to be noticed. I know it didn't look like it. I'm just telling you what I did. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was um, it was a thing where uh, my buddy had gone to some of these places too. So we had the, we had the idea of uh, you know we walked all the way there to save some money, but we didn't want to walk all the way back because it's like three and a half miles at that point that's a long walk in the sun after walking the three and a half miles to get there so we wanted a taxi so they have taxis galore for tourists to take back to back to the pier where the boats are at <clears throat> so so we did so so what we did uh, what he told me is he said okay 
you can kind of haggle with them on the prices, but you can haggle better when you actually have money out. That was the that was the key. He said you can haggle much better when you actually are showing that you have the money right there. So what we did was we we went to a guy. We we had a guy who does the taxi thing. We asked him, "Hey, we'd like to get back to the boat. How much is it?" He's like, "Oh yeah, it's gonna be like nine dollars." We're like, "Oh okay." Uh, we had we had pulled out a five. So we're like, oh, man, you know, you said $9, but, man, I got, we only got a five right now, unfortunately, so we can't really do that. So, like, he's just like, yeah, can't take you, um, but you can go maybe further down that way where there are some taxis and maybe they'll take you. You know, you'd have to see. And so you get, like, three or four taxis that are in a line, and there's just these taxi drivers just hanging out. And we're in a place where there's not a ton of tourists at this point, so they're really not going to get a lot of business at all. And so they're all just kind of hanging out, you know, as possible taxi, but there's not really anything for them to do. So we go up there with the five, and we just go up to these guys and like, hey, we were told to come talk to you. Uh, we got... Uh, you know, we, we really need to get back to the boat, but we only got a $5 on us. And, uh, hey, Budden, how's it going? And so you see, like, two or three of these, like, taxi guys, like, congregating. And then one guy is just kind of reluctantly like, yeah, man, all right, come on in my taxi. Like, oh, you, you'll take us for $5? He's like, yeah, man, come on. <laughs> like, very reluctant. Oh, shit. And so we we managed to get that the 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 uh, twist of that was he turned out to be actually really nice and really cool. So we magically found a couple extra dollars to give him, but we still made out a little bit better than usual. We still made it out with seven instead of nine or ten because they say nine, but sometimes they'll do even you know they'll they'll try to charge you try to charge you even more once you're actually in or there. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we gave him. A, we magically, we magically found a couple extra dollars to give him, because he was he was really cool to us. That I probably could have just taken that. You know, I probably didn't have to uh, swing at that garbage. <laughs> Hindsight being twenty twenty and all that, finding new and inventive ways to. Uh, yeah, he's gonna bunt. So let's just go ahead and. There you go. There we go. Just make sure he doesn't go. Thanks, stay hydrated, bot. <laughs> hey, we still managed to win, it looks like. So, uh, yeah, we, we uh, did that, and it was fun. Oh, my God. Yeah, my plate discipline is just awful. Uh, then we also did a bit of hustling in Jamaica. Because we had a woman standing on the corner, kind of in the pier, in the in the pier area, and you know we were looking for we were looking to go to the beach to just kind of like hang out and do the sun thing and all that, sun water swimming whatever. All right, cool. And so we 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 see this lady and she's like the taxi lady. She's like, oh, you know, you guys want taxis? Okay. Um, th so she, yeah, we had a, st she was very official. She had like, you know, slacks and a polo and stuff on. It's very, it's very interesting. <laughs> haggling and, uh, okay. No, 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 I, I'm saying, I know that haggling and hustling are different, but I felt like what we did in Cozumel was definitely hustling because we definitely had more money on us to pay for the full taxi we didn't haggle a price down there we just straight up told them we only had five dollars on us and we needed to get back to the ship and we managed to you know get someone to reluctantly give us a ride the haggling i think haggling is more what we did in in jamaica we definitely haggled in Jamaica. We hustled when we were in Mexico because we we definitely I don't know if we could have talked them down from the prices, 
But we basically just told them we didn't have the money to do it, but we had this much. Yeah. Hey, all right. I feel like I'm getting my batting average. What is my batting average at? My batting average is somehow at a 400, despite my awfulness. Despite my awfulness, I'm still managing to just make sure I do enough contact hits so that I'm not popping them up too much. <laughs> Hustling is illegal, haggling isn't, typically. I mean, also, you know, foreign country and all that, so... I don't know. That's, that's, that's my feeling, of course. I don't, I don't know what, you know, could be technically hustling or haggling. Who knows? Could have been three straight one-pitch outs of the outfield. Yeah. I'm going to try to do better right here. Right here, right now. I swear to God I'm going to do it. See, that was one I probably could have actually swung at. But I was determined not to swing at something. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was something that was probably right in my wheelhouse and would have done me very well. Now they're going to throw junk. That one, that one didn't look like so much junk. It was just outside. Come on, throw me something that's like obviously, like make me feel better about myself. Throw something so bad. There you go, see? I was really hoping they'll throw something so bad that it would make me look like not an idiot to not swing at it. <clears throat> but yeah, Jamaica. Hang on one second, because I, I really want I really want this. Oh, that was okay. Yep. I I can't even defend that. Yeah, I'm just as mad as the player there I, I can't even defend why I swung at that one I don't even know this is why I don't play baseball games that much is because I'm really bad at judging pitch locations that's kind of my that's kind of the thing I'm terrible at like I'm kind of surprised I even have 42 play discipline <laughs> I should have like a zero all right, cool. Fielding and throwing accuracy, awesome. <clears throat> uh, clutch, contact. I mean, I can upgrade my contact, but that's not going to do too much. Plate vision. Um, I can maybe try to turn my stealing up. Might be helpful. Uh, durability, batting clutch, reaction cap. I'll turn my reaction cap up. I, I should probably do that when I get a chance. <clears throat> Your affection for the balls will be highly appreciated in a different field. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so the the lady, the the taxi lady in Jamaica, standing on the corner, she, you know, we were looking for a taxi. So she looks at us. She's like, "How many of you?" Okay, it's like four adults, four adults and two children. Okay, it's going to be twenty dollars for each of you. Uh, okay, well the kids are like three and four years old, so they're really small. They're not really going to take up any space at all. She's like, "Yeah, it's going to be twenty dollars per person." So that's 120 bucks to get six people to the beach and back. That is insanity. <clears throat> so she tells us, okay, uh, you go outside the gate here, you take a left, and you talk to this guy named, I think it was like Mari or Mahi or Maki, Ma something. It was probably like Mari. I think it was Mari. Oh, come on now. Sack fly, come on, baby. All right, I'll take it. So it's like there's a he's got a red shirt. His guy is his guy named Mari. That's your taxi driver. Go to him. Don't talk to anybody on the way. And uh, oh my god. And uh, we 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 see why uh, you don't talk. Like she wanted us to not talk to anybody on the way. 
is because on the way they have like a little side parking lot where all the taxis and stuff, other taxis and stuff go. And these are all like independent people, so they don't have to really answer to much of anybody. It's just these guys, you know, they're just trying to make some money. And um, they're they're basically sitting there going, oh, yeah, you guys need a taxi. And so we start kind of haggling again with these guys this time where one of our friends, we're kind of still walking. And one of our friends kind of stops behind. And he's like, yeah, man, but we already kind of got a taxi for like twenty dollars a person and blah, blah, blah. And that guy's like, oh, no, man, you, you're getting uh, ripped off. I could do, uh, you know, fifteen dollars a person. And they're like, oh, oh god damn it! That was that was such a garbage swing. I'm, I get too much into telling my story. That's that's the uh, that's that's what I'm gonna go with here. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna go with, is that I'm engrossed in telling the story. <clears throat> but um. He's like, oh, yeah, we can do $15 a person. And he's like, yeah, that's pretty good, but, you know, not, not that great of a deal. And, you know, the kids are really small. And, you know, do you got a, maybe a dis other discount on the kids? And, like, we're still walking away. So he can see us leaving. Like, we're just, we're moving. The guy's like, yeah, man, we got a taxi catch. And the guy's like, all right, $15 a person for the adults, and the kids can ride free. And so my buddy wanted to make absolutely sure. He's like, just to make absolutely sure you, you'll take us there and back for $15 a person and the kids are free. He's like, yes. And we're just like, okay, cool. So, so we ended up uh, walking with him. And everything got a, this is This is the, also the shadiness right here is we couldn't just board right there. It was... <laughs> It was with his taxi, so we had to go down the street. So what happened is he told us, he was like, all right, cool. We have a deal, you know, 15 for each adult, and then the children are free. Uh, go down the street and uh, meet me at the gas station. <laughs> like, oh, and we're just like, um, sure. Sure, why not? You just strong arm people for fun. Hey, these motherfuckers are strong arming tourists all fucking day, man. One hundred and twenty dollars to drive ten minutes to the beach and ten minutes back for six goddamn people. You're goddamn right. We'll strong arm these people. Can you imagine how many motherfuckers just take everything at face value and do that shit? Fuck it. I don't care. That's what business is. It's back and forth. But yeah, it sounds like a delightful vacation. But yeah, he's like, oh yeah, just meet me down by the gas station. I'm like, oh, well, this sounds a well, little okay. This is. <laughs> but yeah, it was legit. We didn't get stabbed or kidnapped or died or anything, despite like what my buddy's dad was saying. My buddy's dad was um okay so royal caribbean has a thing my, my buddy's dad is a very doom and gloom type guy he uh he he more or less likes to talk about the things that could potentially happen to you on these vacations that could kill you or maim you or get you sold into slavery <laughs> and we i don't know if anyone here has ever seen the movie the crudes I did because there's not a ton of channels on the TVs, obviously, but Royal Caribbean has a deal with DreamWorks to do um, to to air DreamWorks stuff. So, <laughs> so uh, they have the, they have an actual like DreamWorks channel where it's just a constant loop of DreamWorks movies being played on that specific channel on the boat. So it was it was interesting and the crudes were like one of the video were one of the movies and like the dad has also been one of those guys where instead of trying to like live he's just trying to survive and like the the running gag is like the stories that he tells or about people being curious or going off and doing something on their own fun 
And then he just has like his hand covered in red and then he just goes, and then they died. So that became like a running gag with with uh, my buddy's dad <laughs> because he would talk about like you know the possibility of like the cartel in Mexico or you have to watch yourself in certain areas or blasey blasey and all this stuff and very doom and gloom and he's like frightening this other couple that he's talking to <laughs> They just seem a little shaken up by the fact that they maybe don't want to go off the boat for fear of getting kidnapped or stabbed or killed or whatever. <laughs> it is crazy. Uh, should I do a... You know what? I should do a ground ball. I haven't done a perk in a while. How many times did I see Shrek? Um... Shrek, actually, they didn't have... It's weird because they actually only had a very specific rotation, as we found. So they only played Shrek Ever After, uh, which is one I hadn't seen because I kind of stopped caring after, like, the second one. Uh, that was halfway decent. The Croods is the one with the cavemen, yes. Hang on one second. I want to make this happen, damn it. That dropped more than it should have. I call bullshit. <laughs> that motherfucker dropped it like a good eight inches when it didn't need to be. <laughs> that was going straight, and it was going to be great, and I could actually hit it. I blame the game. <laughs> Three pitches in and out. <laughs> this is I'm getting upset. <laughs> I'm telling you now I'm insulted <laughs> at my own gameplay. I'm not insulted at you guys pointing it out. I'm more insulted at my own gameplay. I hope you guys are too. <laughs> Excited for Shrek 5? Not so much. Oh, God damn it. But yeah, they had... Oh, God. Okay. I'm trying to remember the, the rotation. So it was like the Croods, Megamind, Shrek Ever After, Monsters vs. Aliens, uh, Madagascar 3. I think that was it. I don't think there was anything else beyond that. Oh, you got, what? What are you, do, what are you doing? What was he doing? Play discipline. <laughs> so yeah, and there's, he was just scaring this poor couple because it's like, oh yeah, if you go out there, you can take a wrong turn, you could get stabbed or murdered. These people are like, ah, okay. <laughs> You're mad. We're right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you have no idea what's happening, therefore cannot judge you. <laughs> Steal the base. I got it. I'm on it. We got this. I got it right here. Ready? 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 Stop looking at me and throw the ball. Got it. I'm there. I'm there. Plenty of time. <laughs> he no hit ball good. <laughs> I no hit ball good at all. Uh, I get lucky. That's what happens. So I have a th I somehow have a 395 batting average. Can you imagine how high my batting average would be if I actually had plate discipline? This is just, maybe this is like Barry Bonds syndrome. I don't know. Barry Bonds didn't swing at everything, did he? Maybe that's more a David Ortiz thing. Orphanage for wayward pitches. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, wow. Plenty of time. 
trying to get into scoring position, but it's half on this. This is why I prefer cricket. I understand cricket. I sort of understand cricket. I'm just terrible at cricket. I did. I did like one video where I did a game of it, thinking, "Yeah, I, I can kind of be okay." No, I'm not okay. Imagine what power type would be if I was good at it. I <laughs> know so an entirely different player. <laughs> Fuck you. There you go. Oh, look at that. Oh shit. It's amazing what I can do when I hit it into a, when I hit it in a an, in a spot that's actually good. Was that one or two pitches? I think that was two. I want to say it was two. Make myself feel better. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was fun. They had some shows on board too. They showed a new movie like every night. I wasn't really interested in hardly any of them. They had like Wonder Woman. I thought about that, but it was an outdoor movie. I didn't want to do the outdoor movie. But they have a theater, and in the theater on the big screen one night they showed Black Panther, and I hadn't seen Black Panther yet, so. I feel glad that I saw that because it was a really good movie. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> First pitch was wide left. Okay. Shit. Playing Formula One now. Another thing you understand more than this. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Then they had, what did I see there, too? Oh, yeah, they had, like, a Broadway, like, a musical production of Saturday Night Fever. That was interesting. The, uh, the, the, the aforementioned female friend that I was hanging out with, she, was, she had never seen Saturday Night Fever at all, and she was enthralled by it. Oh, boy, was she enthralled by Saturday Night Fever. Probably also helped that she had a couple dirty martinis in her as well, but she was she was into it, <laughs> and she was she was very vocal to me about certain characters. Or she's like, "Is this the character that John Travolta played?" Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the character that John Travolta played. He's really kind of an asshole. Yeah, I th I think that's kind of the, uh, the I think that's kind of the uh, the point. But yeah. Oh, good. I mean, I kind of have to do the cap upgrade whenever that happens because they're very few and far between, honestly. <clears throat> Forgot she was drunk, dirty martinis, yeah. The cool thing is, is that one of our friends actually had like a portable um, breathalyzer. So we actually got to see like... Okay, how drunk are you? And then we get and then we would get exact numbers for how drunk she was. I'll just say uh, the number was over the legal limit. <laughs> Into the box now. Big Daddy dirt bag. It was it was interesting. Um the oh god. I think the worst parts of uh, of it besides my sunburn were the room some parts of the rooms themselves the rooms were quite small but then again i think we had the cheap ones which really if those are the cheap ones god damn man kind of a small room but on top of that like i will say i was so glad when i actually came home to my own bed because it is a bed of my own creation it is a memory it is a 12 inch memory foam mattress it is layers upon layers of foam getting softer and softer as you get up. There's not a single spring in it. It's great because it's super easy to move around, too. There you go. Go! And it is very soft, and it has a lot of nice soft pillows. My room in particular uh, was not like that. It was um it was as if someone had thrown uh, a bed sheet over springs. Just sp like the thing was I don't know where you get these mattresses from. This thing was like 95% spring with some material thrown over it. It was really quite something. I don't think I got an actual single night of uh sleep that I would consider any one person would consider good, despite how tired I would be and how 
much I would want to sleep, I don't think I had a, a point where I would actually consider it a good night of sleep. Just because it was so, the beds were so stiff. Oh my god, they sucked. The bathrooms are small too. Oh my god. The shower. The shower is not built for a dude my size. I'm not like, I'm not even like morbidly obese. I have like a beer, I have what, what, what amounts to like a beer gut. I'm just a, I'm just a, also a six foot four dude. Like the, it is not meant for long limbed people. That the, those showers that they have are built for people like a, a foot shorter than me. Breathalyzers are fun. <laughs> Try to set a high score on New Year's Eve. That's amazing. See, I did the plate discipline thing at least this time. Now give me props. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Long-limbed people. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. And then there was like 85, there was like 85 mirrors as well. That was another weird thing about the room is that I don't know. I don't know if that's the thing where it's like, oh, yeah, your room looks bigger if there's mirrors. But there was just a ridiculous amount of mirrors. Like, okay, in the room it has like uh, like a couch, a little mini coffee table, and then, of course, the bed. And then it's got like a dresser area where you can put like a lot of your stuff there. The TV's on there. And like there's like a vanity mirror for women who want to like do their makeup. Oh, my God. So, if we ignore all your previous at-bats, you did a great job. <laughs> oh, my God. <clears throat> your winning New Year's number this year was .135 before you continued to drink and passed out. Yeah, she had a... I think the one of the times we checked, she had like a .12... Yeah, point one two. She was interesting. She took a plate home from dinner, and she just didn't have anywhere to put it. So she put it on, like, her mom's bed. Because she was like, I'm going to get hungry later. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. I'll carry it. <laughs> you blew a point three. And that's not true if you were close to dying. Yeah, being a point three, you might as well, yeah, you, you'd be calling for an ambulance at that point. But, uh, yeah, they have a, so they have the vanity mirror and that's fine. I understand the vanity mirror and I understand the bathroom mirror, but then they also have on the, on, uh, like on the corner, like a full body mirror. So it's like, oh yeah, you can look at yourself full body mirror, but it's like the vanity mirror is plenty big enough to do that on your own. You don't need a full body mirror. And then on top of that, instead of like a headboard or anything for the room, they have like this giant circular mirror just on the back wall. So there's just all these mirrors. It's fucking insanity. So it made it made things really interesting. You'd have to be really good friends with somebody <laughs> to try to get changed in that room. Because there's, there's not a lot of privacy. It's very small. And then there's just mirrors everywhere. So you can't really, like, face away. Because then you're basically still able to catch a glimpse. <laughs> you brought your Fred S to your 45-year-old uncle's house. You started with 140-proof moonshine shots. Jesus. Leading off the inning. Big uh, two things that begin with if you blew a point three an ambulance and alcohol is anonymous. <laughs> yeah. Now that was the thing also about the guy that I roomed with, why he didn't drink. Is that a home run? Did I s oh. That would have been if it was fair. Fuck. Wow, I'm just glad I at least got on base after nearly hitting a homer. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that was the thing about the guy that I was rooming with, is he actually has gone through the uh, the alcoholics thing. 
Um, yeah, alcohol. He, like he really did have uh, pretty bad alcoholism. I've known him long enough to know that he did. <laughs> And uh, I guess he had gotten in some trouble with it, too, because uh, it's not every day you see someone on a cruise with a, an ankle monitor on their on their leg. I have no idea how he was able to like when I saw the ankle monitor, I'm like, how are you able to go on this trip? <laughs> I guess it got shut off, but he couldn't go swimming. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been manslaughter if it was accidental. <laughs> it would have been a home run if it was fair. Oh. Here now the two two. Skyed in the air to straight. Damn. He hauls it in without any trouble, and there are two away. I don't I don't think there was anything else to mention. I know I mentioned on Twitter the fact that everything had gone everything had gone so smoothly up until like the final day when I actually left. The cruise went smoothly, the the flight there went smoothly. Everything went smoothly right up until I actually like got home. Like my flight got delayed by like an hour, which is fine because the the, the first plane See, look at that. Did you do you see where he hit the ball? <laughs> Not that that makes me any better, but did you see where he hit the ball? Stepping into the box, Kenji Aoki, number 32. But um Yeah, everything was going fine. The the first flight that I had from Houston to Dallas took like an extra half hour. Which was really bad because that was pretty much all my layover time. Because like I got in, I got into I got into Dallas at two fifteen, which is when I was supposed to be boarding my next flight to get back to, to get back to Des Moines. But that flight got delayed by like an hour or so, so it gave me enough time to actually like relax, grab something to eat, and all that. But they also changed the gates, too, and Dallas is really weird about their uh, airport because their airport is like this one big airport that is split in half. It's weird to, it's weird to talk about it. it. Maybe not weird to talk about it, but it's weird to describe it. Dallas, Dallas's international airport is basically six, a series of like six uh, small airport like gates strewn on either side of a major. Oh God! I think he just took that one to the face. Strewn on either side of a major highway, and you have to take like this, this like uh, I think they call it the Skylift. No, Skylink. It's like a little train thing that gets you from one gate to another because you can't actually just walk there. You have to take their little sky lift. So, yeah, they had changed gates on me, which means I had to take the which means the sky lift that I took to my original gate. I now had to go back up and take another another series of uh, of of uh, little monorail train deals to get to the proper gate. And I think that's where it, it fucked up and they lost my luggage. So Yeah, that was that was the main thing was having having the worst of my fears come to life in the fact that they had lost my luggage. I get to Des Moines and I'm looking at bags and I'm like, nah, it just isn't here yet. Just isn't here yet. No, still not not and then like it was it was weird because they really screwed up that day. Like I don't know, Sunday must have been like a real bad day for American Airlines because there was probably about a dozen or so bags that went unclaimed, and another dozen of us that were mass reporting lost luggage. Like we had a we had a line started all from one flight. Like they had to ask us. They're like, "Okay, uh, who's on what flight? Are you all on the same flight?" And we all just like, "Yes." They're like. It's just like the little woman had this look in her face like, Jesus. 
So yeah, it must have been a bad day or something, cause yeah, it was uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, but it was it was uh, yeah. Fortunately, I had gotten a call on Monday that they had found it. So it, it, I actually got it delivered to my door less than 24 hours after realizing that I had lost it. Um, so that was that was at least good. It was at least good to know that it didn't it didn't take that much, and I didn't because I've I've heard because I had heard stories about how you know people have lost their luggage. C coming into a cruise and they had to spend the whole cruise without it and it took them like four days to you know actually find the luggage so to get it within 24 hours is at least like an upside to that which still allowed me enough time to actually like do some laundry and have some clean clothes for today which is great because it was a good major I don't own a ton of clothes that I would wear on a regular basis and most of it was, hey, look at that plate discipline. <laughs> most of that was uh, in in my bag there. So yeah. Where did I fly to for my cruise? Um, flew down to Houston because there's no airport in Galveston, so you have to take a taxi or an. U I took a lift uh, from Houston to Galveston. And Galveston Port is where they come out of. They got a couple of big terminals for that, too. It's nice. I was really, I was really, uh, I, I was really scared that I wasn't going to make my flight. We had gotten out of the terminal lickety split, called the Uber to uh, get us to Houston. And at that moment, right where all the lanes kind of start diverging and we can watch this happen basically in front of us where the lanes start diverging so that people can kind of get to their located like pick up and drop off areas. Someone just pulls out in front of another truck and there's an accident. And instead of like maybe trying to get out of the way, you know, try to try to do this in a place where <clears throat> the traffic can still flow. They just stopped right there. So the four lanes of traffic now turn to two lanes on either side of the of the vehicles, which eventually turned to one lane because like the far right lane was also being used not as it should be and as like a loading and unloading zone. So there were people just parked in that lane too. So that just butt fucked everybody for like 25 minutes, which is another thing that absolutely perplexed me that for something that when they drove away, looked so goddamn minor as far as damage that had happened. It's not like it was some big thing where, like, holy shit, half his bumper's missing. Like, it was one of those things you really have to squint at it to see where the actual damage occurred. And it took him 25 minutes. I'm like, it is 20. I, I, I remember saying this to my buddy. I'm like, it is 2018. Take a few pictures exchange information you don't even have to write info down at this point you can just take a picture of the guy's insurance card and be on your way i have no idea how the fuck it took that goddamn long even if you had to like contact police or something like it's still there's no reason for that and i was pissed off because i really thought i was going to miss my flight for this bullshit <laughs> Did it butt fuck everybody out of nowhere? Basically. <laughs> it sucked. It sucked. It basically slowed everything down by like a good half hour. Backed everybody up. Well, Golden Glove winner, I am not. Replacing jeans and wrestling t shirts isn't hard. Wow. It's cargo shorts and anime shirts, thank you. <laughs> Don't celebrate for not swinging a ball. <laughs> yeah, I'm not one of those guys with the complicated wardrobe. It's really, it's, yeah, it's really not. It, it wasn't a thing where, like, my, my, uh, 
Wow. You see that? That was a called strike on a clear, clear as day ball. This ump sucks. How did I not hit that? Swing time was. Wait, how did I not hit that? Seriously. Hold up. How did I not hit that? Oh, this fucking game. <laughs> Flame silk shirts. Uh, well, shit. <clears throat> yeah, it's just a lot of, like, cargo shorts and black T-shirts and socks and underwear. That's about it. That's about all I was missing. The main thing that was the pain in the ass of losing my uh, luggage was the fact that it also included my switch charger and imagine an actual batter. Wait, time out. How did I miss that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my switch charger and my phone charger. My switch charger I wasn't too fond of, but I could just deal with that. That's fine. I didn't need to play my switch for that day. And my phone charger, I got enough of the the style of cords as well as like AC like plug-in chargers with a USB thing at it. Wait, why did I bring my switch for the flights? I got a lot of Donkey Kong done on the way down and up. I didn't really play the Switch much on the cruise other than, like, mornings that I woke up and couldn't fall back asleep. Like, there was actually, the, I, I would say most mornings I actually did play my Switch a bit because it was 7 in the morning. There wasn't really anything to do right away. I had woken up and I couldn't fall back asleep because uh, the guy I was rooming with is an ex obscenely loud snorer. I would try to mimic it now, but I would probably break someone's eardrums if they were wearing earphones. Just imagine comically loud snoring, and that is what real life was like. <laughs> he was an obscenely loud snorer, and I'm like just a few feet away from him. It was ridiculous. So sometimes it'd be hard to try to get back to sleep at like 7 in the morning. And he wouldn't wake up till 8, 8.30, so I'd have probably a good hour to just kind of, like, sit there on the couch just playing my Switch or keeping up on ESPN with what's going on with the NBA playoffs. That was another big thing, too, was keeping up with that and the uh, Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN. <clears throat> there we go. Millennials grumble, crumble. <laughs> this game is fun. <laughs> uh, I disappointed you with the fact that I actually got the hit. Uh, so, yeah, that's generally what it was for. The, the flight there and back. I was going to just do my 3DS because if anything happened to my... Because on the off chance that anything happened... I would care far less about anything happening to my 3DS than my Switch. But at that point I was like, uh, I got more I got better games that I that I want to actually like get get some uh some uh, uh um like get through. So <laughs> I brought my Switch. Give us what you have on this lineup as they start a new Your series. brother's a Rockets fan. I got to walk on eggshells around here now. See, that's the great thing about being a Magic fan is I've already been dead inside since, like, December. <laughs> I'm just sort of I'm just sort of keeping up just to know. I'm just like, uh, yeah, I'm kind of hoping for, like, Celtics, Rockets because, you know, I don't, I don't really care for... Cavaliers and Warriors again. It'd be nice. It probably won't happen, but it'd be nice. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, other than that, eh. 
Do I ever play Telltale games on stream? No. I did play like the first season of The Walking Dead. And then like I found out it's like, oh, all Telltale games are like this? Okay. And then I found out, oh yeah, a lot of these actually aren't that great. I think that's another big thing. I'm never the biggest fan of Telltale games. I don't know. It's just not my thing, I guess. I don't know. Like, okay. It's weird because it kind of has the the whole, like, sort of choose your own adventure thing. Sort of. It's a little bit more interactive. But I've just never been the biggest fan of those games. That's just my personal feeling. I've never been the biggest fan of those those games at all. And if you are, God bless you. You know, I'm not going to... I'm, I'm, I'm just telling people it's not my cup of tea, but... For other people, it might be. Have I tried bunting? What is bunting? <laughs> is it is it that thing where I hit a where I try to hit a home run and then I don't? Uh, boom. Your personal favorite Telltale game is Tales from the Borderlands. Okay. But that's had pretty good. That's had pretty good writing as is. I don't, you know. I I can't imagine it's you know that. I don't know. It seems weird the idea of taking a, a shooter game, a fun shooter game, and just trying to boil it down into a story mode type thing. That being said, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind if they were maybe if I could get them like cheap. I don't know. They've just never been the biggest things for me, which is weird because like some of the FMV games. That they've come out with recently are something that I wouldn't mind playing there. I just maybe not a Telltale game. I don't know. <clears throat> you thought you were serious for a second. <laughs> I I tried to sell it for a second and I was like, what? Instant save the swings are just slow burning for the eventual strikeout where you go down looking like we all pop. Go down looking where we all pop like a madman. <laughs> I don't know. We're getting to the end here. Maybe by the end of like the next, uh, by the end of this uh, series. I don't know when when I started this series. I don't know if this was if this is the second or third game or whatnot, but I don't know. <clears throat> Why would I swing that damn near bounce before it got to you? You know, you ask these questions and you just kind of already know the answer. Oh, look, I dropped to a 345. You know how much better I do not on stream? Maybe it's the fact that I'm trying to talk and think about where the pitch is at the same time. That was a solid... God damn it. I swear to God that was... I'm getting it's robbed here. He got a good read on it, charges in hard, <laughs> and made a fabulous grab. I'm really... Really? Did I have two of them within a minute? Jesus Christ, what the fuck is wrong with me? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one right here. Uh, okay, that was a little low. That was good. That was good. That was good. I'm not going to I'm not going to swing at these. I'm going to take a really I'm going to take a really solid one. I can't wait to crank one over the wall here. In fact, I'm going to make sure the ball ends up in play because this one's going over the wall. You ready? You ready? Oh. He did the same exact pitch and then I just fell for it. Pretty much right in the same place, too. Man, am I a dipshit. Uh, all right, I got this one. This is the one. This is the one. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Well, it's not over, but okay. I did good. Was that a one pitch out this time? Pretty sure that was at least three, and it was a hit. Wow. And I still got like one of the better 
What is that? 351. I still got one of the better ones besides the catcher, who I'm assuming has only been on like maybe two at bats to have a to be hitting a thousand. Either that or he's got amazing plate discipline. He just hits it. He just hits every single one of them because he has nothing but plate discipline. That's why he's down in Triple A. He's a terrible catcher, but he's the most reliable hitter you'll ever see. And that brings in Taylor Featherston. You know, I just know because I discussed this. Hey, freak amazing, how's it going? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just finding new and inventive ways to make myself look like a jackass <laughs> in this game. But then again, I feel like that's the new name of the game here is to uh, watch me make stupid decisions. Am I gonna beat it out? I'm gonna beat it out. I'm gonna beat it out. <laughs> Like just aren't as bad as they've been. A little yeah. Uh, it's really interesting to see how the Lakers have come along. We'll see what happens in the next couple of years, but yeah. Uh, back, back, back. I just I just know on my YouTube comments I'm gonna get people asking me about like yo man she's single you gotta do something about it like I've had that before when I've told stories about a couple of the couple of the females that I've talked to oh yeah there was one that I was talking about the last few months now yeah one in particular she she really liked anime and video games and she seemed really awesome and all that and yeah, I know there were people like talking about it, and I remember talking about it before. I think I it, she was the one that I I had noted that she was <laughs> thick as a chocolate milkshake. Oh, get back! Oh my God, what the fuck? Why did he go so far? <clears throat> but yeah, that's not so much happening. <laughs> Unpopular pen and don't date her. No, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to, I'm just, this is what I'm going to be dating, just streaming. I'm going to be dating my YouTube channel. Hey, this has been a pretty good, this has been a pretty good game thus far for me. And us, we're winning. Hey, look at that. Save yourself for Jesus. Steal the base. Oh boy, this is going to suck. There you go. Got it. Got it. But yeah, that particular girl that uh, I I had also gone to uh, Wizard World Des Moines, which also, side note, they just announced who was it? David Tennant and Elijah Wood for Wizard World Des Moines. That should be pretty cool. I'm not really a Doctor Who fan, so David Tennant is. Oh my God! There, he's already planning on bunting. This should be interesting. Oh. Okay, I see why. <laughs> when is the little Showtime meter replenish when he might debuts? God damn it. Um. But yeah, the the I went to like Wizard World Des Moines with her last year. It seemed like we really hit it off, and she was interested in blasey, blasey, blasey. And then I guess she met some other guy in her, uh, in, her uh, in her in her town. It's like an hour and a half, two hours away. You know, she had more red flags than a communist rally in Mas Moscow. Funny you mention that. She met a guy in her town that she works with, and uh, started dating him. Which is which is not bad at all. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm never the biggest fan of uh, you know. I'm I'm always one of the big uh, don't shit where you eat type people. But uh, I won't ever fault people for uh, dating coworkers. 
You never know what happens if it doesn't work out, but hey, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the thing about the guy that she met and started dating. Uh, well, she's my age, 27, and he's, uh, how old did they say? Oh, yeah, 42. So, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> so it's kind of like, a, sure, why not? Okay, cool, that's, that's weird. <laughs> Like, it's just one of those things, like, all right, best of luck, I guess. And then I come back with, uh, he's loaded. I don't know. He's working at, he's working at some sort of, like, sort of factory-ish job. I don't know. Dude, who knows? I, don't know. I just kind of, like, shrug my shoulders. I'm like, okay, sure. How did we still lose? <laughs> we still ended up losing, for fuck's sake. I went three for five, and they still only put me at, like, third. Empty stats, I think, is what that's called. <laughs> hey, series has ended. That should probably be where I end this then, too, because it's like an hour 50 in. You have fun with it now that you marry. I mean, she was a... she was. Re that's the thing, is that everything about her, like, was, like, cool. Like, okay. Yeah. Like this particular girl, like she was, uh, it was, it was like, okay, you know, she's really cool and and awesome, and didn't didn't seem like she had red flags like flying originally, and then just decides to date a guy like fifteen years older than her. So it's like, okay, you have fun with that. Let's do that then. I don't remember what what what's what. Um, I guess I'll just change it to these. Why not? There we go. All right. There we go. <laughs> yeah, the shitting where you eat thing. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea. Dude, I see that way too much in the postal service. Holy shit, things get weird sometimes. <laughs> things get quite weird. But, uh, yeah. There we go. Well, I could probably do something a little bit different um, after this. Uh, you know, I wanted to do this, and then I don't know what else I'm going to do after this. I have an idea for something that I've been playing the last couple of days. Um, oh, my cruise. Yeah. Uh, just feel free to. Oh, by the way, if you want to know how my cruise went and, have, and what I had fun doing. Um, yeah, since you asked that again. <laughs> Uh, if you want to know, I, I guess the I'm just going to say it was fun and expensive and I got sunburnt. And if you want to know details, uh, feel free to watch the VOD. Uh, like, feel free to watch the VOD when I'm done or when I upload it to YouTube because that's kind of been the, the whole topic for, like, the last hour and 50 minutes. So... Yeah, you'll, uh, yeah, you can, you can, you can check that once it's, uh, once it's up there. But either way, I'll at least stop the recording for this. And, uh, yeah, for, for you guys on stream, I'll have something that I've, I've been playing. I, I kind of want to play on stream. We'll see how well it works. And, uh, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, thank you very much. And, uh, yes, I am finally back and getting back to doing some regular streaming. And I will see you guys next.